Welcome to the Retrospect Podcast, a show where people come together from different walks of life and discuss a topic from their generation's perspective. My name is Ian, and as always, I'm joined by Jason. Hello, everyone. And Stoney. Hello. It's been a minute since we've yes. been in this studio. Yes. yes. That's all I want to say. We've had, a, over the holiday season, we um, we were over in um, Stoney's studio for a while, uh, a little home away from home, yeah. doing a handful of episodes there. Um, it was a little bit easier for all of us to do that, and... This is one of the first ones we're doing back We're here back in the original the, studio. At the round table. The we're round. at the round table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. So it feels good. I do feel rusty, though. Uh, I was making Jason some coffee, and I told him earlier, I was like, hey, you got to be... I know. Apologies. It's been a while. So, you know, I kept saying, it's one thing I miss. I miss getting that <laughs> cup of coffee from Ian. Yeah. You know, so... But I had it. It's very good. It was very refreshing, and... Glad to hear him. Yep. You That's did a awesome. great job. So <laughs> thank you so in much. In that meantime, right. we hit a milestone. Yeah. Yes, there, we did. There, there is a difference between listens and downloads, and I guess analytically, it's very hard to to nail down listens. So most of the the analytics are done by downloads, a complete download, and we hit over ten thousand downloads this week. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> is that not just insane? That's, that's incredible, really cool. and and it's just amazing. It's been a great journey. Um, uh, I've had a few hiccups in that journey. Um, I'm glad to still be here. Is that what we call those? We call those hiccups. Yeah, hiccups. <laughs> um, I, I would, um, I will tell you and Jason, Ian and Jason that, um, this is the time to buy stock in bubble wrap. Oh, is that right? <laughs> because buy apparently all. in May, Miranda is going to be buying lots of bubble wrap and wrapping me in it. So <laughs> nothing else happens June and July. So get That's some good stuff. Get your stock in bubble wrap. And um, yeah, you know, so. yeah, <laughs> nothing's fun. going out. Yeah, no, more have no, no more hiccups. No, my, no. my finger, no has, more bouncing off my, the walls. My finger has healed. Yes, and true Wonderful. to what the doctor said, the fingertips are like uh, uh, lizard chameleon tails. Yeah. And it it kind of grew back. I don't have any fingerprints on it, but <laughs> the fingertip is back. So yeah. it's got a go. little bitty, maybe a little quarter inch by a quarter, a little bit bigger than a quarter inch scab left on it, but the yeah. rest of it's healed up. I'm glad to hear. <laughs> it's no... st- it still dings when I thump it, though. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> there hasn't been any big um, injuries for me in the <laughs> in the past few weeks, so I'm, I'm in good. That's good. But you went to Florida, you said? Yeah, I went to, to Melbourne, Florida. I, I okay. went to go visit. Uh, the, well, the... It, I saw that they had a half marathon there, and I have some family that lives there. And I said, you know, that might be a great opportunity to, to kind of schedule that where I can we can visit with them. And especially now uh, they retired. That's <laughs> right. I'm uh, I, I'm uh, at the uh, when this podcast drops, I will have now be officially retired. Okay, from the department, and um, so yeah, it's uh. Uh, it's been nice. It's like somebody asked me, you know, how are you, how are you kind of handling it? And I yeah. said, I like being off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So it's been, you know, it's a bit awkward. Uh, still, still trying to kind of nail down a new routine. Yeah. Uh, right now, though, unfortunately, I'm I'm battling a, my, my back flared back up on oh, me again. No. So, uh, yeah, so I've got... Uh, uh, yeah, I've got some damaged disc from self-inflicted wounds years mm. ago, and um, yeah, I was involved in a little car crash uh, right. that I, I kind of reaggravated some of that stuff, and 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 now it seemed like another little flare-up occurred after I had done some work around my parents' house. Oh. Um, be careful, man. <laughs> yeah, you know it, it's the funniest thing because I was fine, felt okay. I mean, I ran the half, no problem. Yeah. Um, it, it was all good. Um, how how'd you do in time? About two hours. Okay. I think nice. it was two hours and two minutes. Wow. And uh, is there which, like a like a par time or something? You have to, or there's like a recommended. Oh well, no, it just, just depends. Kinda... It just depends on how you know how how good oh, if you, you finish. Are. Everybody gets a trophy. I, I well, think. I, I think uh, he went it, for the medal. Uh, I went for the <laughs> yeah. medal, of course. <laughs> now you know it, this was kind of a, a a kind of a trip in in I've been working on this trip for a while because I wanted to go see NASA. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah. I had never been to the Kennedy Space Center, and and my family over there live about. 
60 miles to the south. Okay. Wow. Okay. So they can actually go out on the beach and watch the and stuff actually happen. watch stuff, yeah. watch Whoa. them take off. That's wild. So um, I said, you know what, we're going. So me, I took it was me and my stepfather, and we we loaded up. I think we went off on, on was on a Friday, so we left that morning and and drove and and pulled in, and it literally looks like you're kind of pulling into Disney World, so yeah. to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's all space stuff, right? So you, you pull in. There's this huge visitor center. Uh, there's, uh, you know, you go through, they've got these giant, uh, uh, video boards that are showing all kind of right. space related type stuff, which I thought was cool. And then you, you go in and there's this, you know, uh, just massive complex of, of buildings. Mm-hmm. Um, I had bought the Explorer tour, which I highly recommend that if you do get a chance to go get that Mm -hmm. because what that does is you get on a bus a kind of a vip bus oh fun and they take you to all the launch sites whoa okay yeah that's cool because nasa is about 100 almost 150,000 square acres of land so they they have all these launch pads Mm -hmm. all over the place uh, it's amazing how I many launch pads. I had no idea they had that many launch pads. I think almost like forty of them. Um, but because uh, I saw the the, the and launch- they told you this was Apollo. This correctly, this Apollo. Okay. yeah. Like for example, I saw the one that Challenger yeah. took oh, wow. off from. Um, <laughs> That's incredible. Thirty nine, thirty nine. Was it thirty nine A? I think it was thirty nine A that a Challenger took off from. Um, but you're right there on top of the ocean. Uh, mm-hmm. so it's, it's literally right there next to you. Um, but, uh, you know, great things like they got this one facility that it was called gateway and, and you walk in and it's, you have like four different options. So it's a lot of, uh, virtual reality sim- mm-hmm. simulators and yeah. stuff like that. So, uh, my, my dad and I picked, uh, law, I think it was called Far Away Worlds or something like that. Well, you, you they go in, they hook you up into this these chairs, yeah, and in the whole it's like a platform, and then the whole platform moves forward, and you got this gigantic screen going above you, in front of you, and all the way down below you. Wow! So you feel like you're hanging yeah. in space, so to speak. So. You blast off and you go see all these alien different worlds <laughs> and stuff. Okay. So you're flying through canyons and, mm-hmm. you know, what kind of these worlds would look like. Right. And they had like three others that we we couldn't get to because we had to get on the bus. And mm. that bus took a good bit of the day because they bring you all the way out to the Saturn Five facility, mm-hmm. which you get to actually see the gigantic rocket. Golly. It's in the building. Uh, <laughs> it's absolutely incredible how big. Uh, matter of fact, if I remember right, it's still the most powerful rocket ever created. That's so crazy. when you see these rockets blast off, mm-hmm. you see all that white stuff. People think that's smoke. No. It's steam. It's steam. Right. Yep. Because they're they, shooting they, so much water. They flood everything. these chambers yep. with 300,000 gallons yep. of water. Yep. And the reason they do that, because prior to that, mm-hmm. they were blowing out windows 20 miles away. Yep. <laughs> I've heard about this before. So, it, it, which I yeah. never knew that. Never knew that. And so that was, I thought was very interesting. Um, but I went on a, uh, a shuttle simulator that simulates a blast off oh, in the gosh. shuttle. Oh, gosh. So wow. you, you, the whole time you 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 begin the process where you got an astronaut talking to you on the screen. Right. One of these guys have, like, flown, like, four or five shuttle missions. Mm. So he's telling you about all the checkoff lists and everything. Okay, are you ready to go? Mm-hmm. And blah, blah, yeah. blah, and blah, blah, blah. And he uh, eventually you get to the point where you, you go into this room and there's rows of chairs. And you... You get in, they strap you in, mm-hmm. and then the whole thing, the whole floor turns 90 degrees there upward. You like you're looking like they would look like or as they were getting ready to blast off. <laughs> so you blast off. I mean, the, everything's shaking. 
you got wind kind of hitting you, so you yeah. feel like something is yeah. you're moving forward. And on the screen, you're seeing the speed and the G-forces <laughs> that you're encountering as you're going up. So, I mean, you're getting up to 15, 16, 17, 18,000 miles an hour. Jeez. So it's just incredible. But we only saw about 50% of, of, of wow. NASA. So if I go back, you know, when I go back again, I, I will literally, we'll spend the rest of the day strictly <laughs> actually in that initial area yeah. to kind of capture all that. Um, so it was a great trip. It, awesome. it really was. Loved it. Um, it was very relaxing. The water was beautiful. Of course. Uh, a lot of alligators out there. <laughs> I was surprised. I took some pictures of several of them wow. just basking on the, uh, okay. you know, because as you're on the bus yeah. driving around, they'll say, oh, there's an alligator there. And there it is. <laughs> Big yeah. Didn't you say something about a lady drinking her coffee or something? Oh, yeah. They in were, a building or yeah, something? Yeah, they say because the they, they're so prevalent out there, they said they had a lady... Uh, one of them got out of one of those lakes and broke into one of the buildings. And one lady was that morning showed up at work, was starting to make her coffee. And yeah. There's an alligator in the room. So I should say it's an alligator or a croc. Um, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, she said, yeah, that she had a, a definitely an interesting morning. I, think so I, don't think, I don't think we have crocs here. I think we have alligators here. We so. have alligators. We don't have crocodiles here. That's that's yeah. They're a little different than I think. Mm-hmm. Crocs are more rounded in their nose, versus alligators are more pointed. That's just that'd be insane to wake oh, up and go yeah. boom. Oh snap! <laughs> yeah, I got an alligator in the break room. You yeah, know, have, a, right. have a coffee and a poo real quick. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need any caffeine. No, that that's what you say. Yeah, you are up. to wake you up real quick. Jeez. So yeah, so it was a great trip, and um, I-, I loved it, and uh, I needed the time away, and. Uh, the weather was was cool, right? You know, because it's it's still that wind's kicking out there on the Atlantic. Oh yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So and it's time of the year, so it was a uh, bit chilly. Once the sun kind of went down, mm-hmm. it got chilly. Yeah. Um, I would like for y'all to help me out. Um, we have an episode coming up. Ask the mortician. Yes. So can we talk about that right quick? If uh, yeah. any of our listeners have a uh, question or a thought, or just something fun, or not fun, just serious for our mortician that will be coming on the show. Um, our email is... Get offended together at gmail.com. Or you can write it in there. Or I don't know how many of y'all have my number somehow magically, mm. <laughs> but you can text me or something. And, and, and we want to make it an interesting show. I think it's a fascinating topic. Um, and just help us out. Let us let us know what mm-hmm. you think. And, Absolutely. And ask some questions because it's going to be fun. I would think our listeners out there, I think some of them that would, uh, you know, make them think about, yeah, that would be mm-hmm. something you don't really talk a whole lot about. But mm-hmm. uh, there you go. You got first hand knowledge. Here's an opportunity and, to actually question and ask what these people actually do and how all that process works. Right. I actually worked with a girl whose family was in the mortician business. Okay. So uh, she ended up moving back to her home state mm. and to rejoin the business. I knew a girl that became a mortician, uh, and she was like the like the least likely person you'd imagine that would be in that position. And mm-hmm. one people you'd think that would be like, oh yeah, I could see them, you know, potentially doing that as a career. Like she was not that person, and she was like, that's what I do now for a living. And I was it, like, wow, it's, congratulations! It's like, one it's, of those careers yeah. that if you know how to do it, you'll always have work. Right. And they say that food, plumbing, and death. (laughs) You can always have, so everybody's got to eat, everybody's got to poop, everybody's going to die. Yeah. That's why plumbers make the money they make. That's right. Yeah. I think 150 an hour, last (laughs) I heard. (laughs) Jeez. Yeah. All right. Wow. So I know we had mentioned something about this probably last week, I think, or last time we were recording. Mm -hmm. We had talked about. Getting ready for the end. Yeah, the, right. the prepping world. Yeah, the, the, the getting ready for the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, we brought we brought Miranda on because she married a prepper. Yeah. Yep, and um, that was interesting. We had some good feedback on that one. Right. Yeah. So I had some people really enjoy that one because we kept it lighthearted enough, right? And informative. There yeah. was some good information coming out there on kits and things like that. But yeah, this is the, one of the subjects that came up on what we n- might need to be prepared for. Yeah. yeah. And this is it was uh, the like the Yellowstone Cold Era.
Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Believe it or not, two years ago I was in Yellowstone. So yeah. it's um, when this topic came up, I said, "Yeah, I remember reading about some of this stuff when I was there." And I've uh, heard of it, but I, I didn't know that it was like I. To be honest, I didn't know all the details about it, about it being like a like that, that's what's what it is. Like Yellowstone is like a like a dormant volcano sort of thing. It, well, it's a it's a caldera, right? Um, and and you know. Based on what I've been able to read, what a caldera is is it's sort of like when when it a volcano happens, you have an eruption. What happens is the the ground sinks into the to where the magma chamber is, and so yeah. that's why it gives that depression. Yeah. So that's what Yellowstone is. It's a giant caldera. Right. So it, there's been eruptions there in the past. Um, there have been three known. Ones. Right. 640,000 years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 2.1 million years ago. I don't know how we know that. I guess that's science. Or, well, volcanologists, yeah. you know, I think let's just kind of get started real quick on what exactly is a super volcano. Uh, just to kind of that way we kind of get on what we're all, we're, we understand what we're talking about because they're volcanoes and then there's super volcanoes mm-hmm. and Yellowstone would be considered a super volcano. Um, uh, the definition I found is a super volcano is a volcano that has had an eruption with a volcanic explosivity index of eight, the largest recorded value on the index. This means the volume of deposits for each for such an eruption is greater than 1000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles. Wow. So they say super volcanoes occur when magma in the mantle rises into the crust, but is unable to break through. And then it gets trapped, mm-hmm. and that pressure keeps building, 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 eventually gets to the point it pops. Well, this is wow. what has them so concerned right now because this this area – is on the rise. The whole the little area is going up so many centimeters every year, and they're afraid that it's getting ready to pop. Well, I, I saw on the U.S. Geologic Survey website, they put out you know they put out their reports on on the regular, and uh, right now they're showing alert level normal color code green, and that was Thursday, February first of this year. So. Uh, it basically says there were no eruptions of steamboat geyser in January, although minor activity began at the geyser on or about January 20th and can you continue through the end of the month. This suggests that the geyser will erupt soon, possibly in the first half of February. And then it goes on, talks about how many earthquakes have been recorded and uh, ground deformation. You know, it's a typical. Yeah, yeah. Was, it's a typical scientific report that they uh, put yeah, out. I think it was a thousand to three thousand earthquakes um, each year happen at Yellowstone, and it uh, just it varies each year. It changes between a thousand to three thousand. Well, well, that's a pretty big, significant number right there. If you think about it, that's a couple a day at least. Rising anti-Semitism, new generations redefining how they connect with Jewish traditions, changing dynamics among Jews around the globe. Take a deep dive into these topics and more on Mosaic, Exploring Jewish Issues, the podcast brought to you by the Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County. Hear from the thought leaders, politicians, scholars, and artists at the forefront of Jewish life today. Subscribe to Mosaic, Exploring Jewish Issues, wherever you listen to podcasts. Well, they say here, they said, during January of 24, the University of Utah seismograph stations responsible for operation and analysis of the Yellowstone Seismic Network located 226 earthquakes in the Yellowstone National Park region. The largest event of the month was a minor earthquake of magnitude 3.3, located about 10 miles north-northeast of Old Faithful in Yellowstone National Park, and that was on January 3rd. Uh, December seismicity in Yellowstone was marked by two swarms, a swarm of 119 earthquakes located approximately 10 miles north-northeast of Old Faithful, 
occurred January 1st to 10th uh, with the largest one I just mentioned. And then there was a swarm of 38 earthquakes occurred approximately nine miles east, northeast of West Yellowstone Mountain, uh, Montana, during January 6th to 7th. The largest was a 2.1 noted on January 5th. Um, earthquake sequences like these are common and account for roughly 50% of the total seismicity in the Yellowstone region. Yellowstone earthquake activity is currently at background levels. So mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, you know, that's a good thing. We don't want the thing to blow up. Right. Not the way it blew up about 640,000 years ago. Because I think it deposited ash all the way to the east coast of the United States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have found that. So well, that's one of the biggest myths about Yellowstone is that it's a global thing. And it's, it's not really. Yes, uh, even when Mount St. Helens exploded, you could get ash all over the world. But it wasn't an extreme amount of ash. But basically in America, we're going to have some issues. Oh, if, yeah. it, if it pops, basically everything across Amer the, you know, the continental U.S. is going to have some issues mm -hmm. with the ash um, they're saying that the, the lava and the rocks could hit within a two to three state area. Wow. Um, and, but it's not going to be a global catastrophe. Mm -hmm. There will need to be things because depending on how much ash goes up in the air and moves around, they're saying that, um, in our area, we could probably have, you know, maybe two centimeters worth of ash mm -hmm. hit us in our area. Which, Which is it significant. It I doesn't mean, take much, especially no. if you breathe that stuff, and that's the danger. Mm -hmm. Well, and then all the vehicles suck it up into the mm -hmm. you know, yeah, their filters, it, and it's going to create some problems. But I mean, it created problems when Mount St. Helens blew. Yeah, that's well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so it's it's now the thing about these caldera eruptions. There's not a lot of lava, right? Actually, because most of the lava gets blasted up in the Earth's atmosphere, and it gets comes down as as, as ash as in, in big chunks yeah and it's it's like it's almost like glass coming down so it's it's something to be uh as i said you don't want to be um you don't want to be around it right if you're around it you're dead because i think within the the first few hundred miles i think they're talking about 10 feet of ash Golly, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Ten feet. That's well, crazy. Just the heat and the ash yeah. and the 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 big uh, lava rocks hitting. Mm -hmm. There, you know, it's 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 going to be. You, a mess. You're talking about now. I think where where you run into problems is 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 the long term. Where this is where it affects other parts of the globe. Depending really how large an eruption would be, is you you're now you've got a ton of ash going up into the sky. It gets into the stratosphere. It starts getting caught in those winds, and it spreads a blanket over your planet. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at temperatures dropping on average about 10 degrees, right. which is severe. So that not only that affects, you know, food production. Mm -hmm. You think about how that exacerbates winters. Oh yeah, already. Mm -hmm. So you know, just look at where we're at. You drop the average temperature by 10 degrees. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of days of very low temps but for us in on, our state for long periods of time. On a positive note, Volcanica Coffee Company grows <laughs> the <laughs> Kopi Luwak yes. on volcanic soil. Yes, they do. So they'll have a bigger area possibly to grow the Kopi mm. Luwak. Yeah, well, so. you know what I'm saying? It's It's... I can't buy anymore. <laughs> I don't have anymore. It's because you said you wanted it so much. Yeah, now it's they don't like have it. I think we need, local to, we need to go to the, the, the elephant one next to go try that one. <laughs> well, the, well, the other thing is... called Black Forest yeah. Company, whatever. The magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is a huge chamber. It's estimated to be approximately 45 miles across containing between 200 and 600 cubic kilometers of molten lava or molten rock. And that's, that's significant. Um, uh, I mean, when you think about that, that's massive. Yeah, that's a lot. How big is like the, or I guess do we have a rough estimate of how big like the Yellowstone area itself is? 
Is it that full forty something miles across, oh, or it's is it even bigger than that? Big, Yellowstone's okay. bigger than that. So. Yeah, it's. I had some some. I actually had some uh, some numbers on where how big that that caldera is. Well, they're yeah. also worried that this this chamber is also connected to a, a deeper plume of rock that extends at least 410 miles into the earth. Oh, gosh. So you got the main one, and then you have the possibilities of it being connected to another one, and that's 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 well, significant. Well, I've got some stuff here. It says, what are the consequences of an eruption? And it said, would be catastrophic. So oh, yes. the, the immediate loss of life, they say as many as 90,000 people could perish immediately due cool. to the eruption. So that's probably just from the the flat out explosion because it's almost like a nuclear, yes, like a few like a hydrogen yeah. bomb going off. Mm -hmm. The ash blanket, a ten foot three meter layer of molten ash, would spread as far as one thousand miles from the park. Jeez. Air travel disruption. The ash would block off all points of entry from from ground, halting most air travel. Similar to the impact of the twenty ten Icelandic. Uh, volcano eruption nuclear winter the eruption would cause global cooling leading to nuclear winter that would last for years altered weather patterns another catastrophic erupt will likely alter global weather patterns significantly affect of human activity especially on agricultural production for one or two decades now the good thing about it is as bad as it is when it happens eventually when it settles and things get back yeah. to normal it's some of the richest stuff you can yes. actually plant. Yes. You can yeah. put. You can well, put the, plants. The initial part because there's is, so many minerals. Right. In is, it is the pyroplastic flows, and these are fast moving currents of hot gas and volcanic matter, which is what you talked about that initial thing, and it can reach speeds up to 435 miles an hour and temperatures of over a thousand degrees. So basically everything in that right area is just is burned. That's that's the equivalent of like Jason said an atomic bomb. It's just going to burn everything and and incinerate everything in its path. And that's that that they say that could be within 2 or 300 miles of the initial eruption. I said here the the number the percentage of a Another eruption in any given year is about point zero 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 one four percent. Wow, that's small. Yeah, until it happens. Oh, I, you're right. Yeah. You just have they. Uh, from what I mean, you read some things. You say it's every six hundred thousand years. I, I read another article. They said it's actually about seven hundred every seven hundred seven hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand years. That they would be that Yellowstone would be primed for another eruption, which is about another hundred thousand years for us. So it's safe to say that we're uh, we got a long way to go. Now, okay, can it happen? Mm, yeah, I mean, people win the lottery yeah. with the chance <laughs> of winning the lottery. So, you well, know, you you talked about a global event that happened in um, 1815, Mount Tambora in Indonesia um, erupted. And it created such a vast global thing because it released so much sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere that it created your global winter that you were talking about. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that was, it was the, the year without a summer. Yep. Because wow. it basically blocked the sun and created such a winter that there was no summer that year. And that was in 1815. So that wasn't really that long ago. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't a super volcano. That was just a specific volcano that released enough of that gas. So you have to wonder, would that be another negative of this? How much sulfur dioxide would it release if it erupted? So that's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not just the ash, not just, the th you know, it's. That yeah, they, they, Lake, Lake Tambor is one of the, uh, if I remember reading right, it's one of the 20 super volcanoes they've identified. Oh, it, what, it, what they did cl declare it a super volcano. Yeah, I think okay. it's one of the, it's one of the, um, I think, according to this, I got a list of them. Um, uh, La Garita Caldera in Colorado is another one. Lake Toba. In North Sumatra, Indonesia, Cerro Gotcha in Bolivia and Argentina, 
Galen and Catamar some of these names I'm just not very good at in Catamarca, Argentina, Island Park Caldera in Idaho and Wyoming, Valima in Bolivia and Argentina, La Pasana in Chile, Pastos Grandes in Bolivia, Lake Topo in North Island, New Zealand, Long Valley Caldera in California, Ara Caldera in Japan, and Campi Flegrai, also known as the Flegrian Fields in the Naples, Italy. Well, what I was reading here, they don't, it may be classified as that, but it, it doesn't specifically say here, but it is the largest volcanic explosion in recorded human history. What, Lake Whoa. Toba? Yes. Yeah, it is. I think the one that came after that was Krakatoa in the late 1800s, mm-hmm. which, you know, they've made some documentaries on when that thing blew because they were ships at sea that recorded that eruption. Um, it literally blasted the island to nothing. There was nothing left wow. when it when it when it blew up and uh, caused massive tsunamis, you know, waves over 150 feet high. Mm-hmm. You know, cruising over the island. Can you imagine the? You're out there on a wooden ship or whatever it was, I mean, and all there's this, no way. <laughs> I mean, yeah, seeing seeing that. Of course, they're out in deep sea, so they wouldn't mm-hmm. have felt the. Mm-hmm. But the people on the island, I mean, they took a they took it on the chin on that one. That's well. Wild. Another thing that you have to really think about is is that the, the molten lava is considered a liquid form. But how much water is in that area? And Old Faithful is just a true indicator that there's a lot of water there, too. Mm -hmm. And that is an extreme pressure point. Yep. I've I've seen Old Faithful. Yes, so have I. Yes. It's, it's, that's very... It's impressive. It's, it's an interesting, uh, I've got some very good video and pictures of when I was there two years ago of, of seeing some of these geysers. Mm-hmm. blast off like that. It's an incredible sight to see, just to know the sort of pressures underneath the earth that are causing this. Well, you think, so you got to think about this. Most people don't realize that the Rocky Mountains are volcanic. Yeah, well, How do you think they get the hot springs? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, it's hurt. It's it's heat within the it's earth. It's heat within the earth. That that lava is down there. The, the You know, it's, yeah, it's there. Uh, and I, yeah, I mean, all our, you think about all the natural disasters, hurricanes, you know, volcanoes, it basically just means your planet's alive. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's actually, if you look at dead worlds, you know, and, and, you know, when you see these, you know, chosen, it's, there's no volcanic activity at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, the planet's dead, mm-hmm. which means the core of the earth is cold. But that's also what makes our atmosphere. That's also what yep. keeps the, the sun rays from burning us to a crisp. You have to have it all. The planet has to be alive for us to survive. Mm. Well, considering that world food reserves would last about 74 days if all of a sudden... Jeez. <laughs> if if you really impacted food production... Uh, that's about now. That was back in 2012. The United Nations estimated the for if basically you stop producing food, that's how much would be left. 74 days to feed the Earth's population. Wow. Now the good thing is we produce way more food than we need. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, we produce enough food right now to feed. I saw some estimates of close to 10 billion. So. We still got another couple billion people to get before we exceed food supplies, uh, and that's boring. You don't develop technological means to further increase food production. So yeah, like putting bugs in our meat. Well, uh oh. No, now we're talking about other things. <laughs> that's you know. next week's topic. Yeah, I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> bugs in your food. <laughs> Stay tuned, everyone. <laughs> Jeez. So yeah, but. Uh, but believe it or not, NASA had a plan. Uh oh. Uh oh. NASA plan? had a plan. Drop a thermonuclear deal. weapon down in it no, and try to melt not, it together. Not not at all. Not at all. It is a 
inject it with it, uh, it, nitrogen to cool it, it off? It, what? It, it, NASA scientists came to consider the problem. Actually, the same people who were part of the committee trying to deal with the the potential impact of a asteroid, a asteroid or a meet, you know comet or something like that, which that's another whole different ball game. Um, they actually said the best way to do is to try to cool the supervolcano down. They say a supervolcano produces enough heat to be the equivalent of six full-fledged giant power stations. That's just the heat wow. it produces. So they're thinking somehow maybe we can put water down there, let that water heat up, the steam comes out, we use the steam to generate turbines. That water then gets cooled and puts back into the earth, mm. and then the cycle continues. So it's they would drill from the outside in to go kind of underneath the caldera, so to speak, mm-hmm. because you don't the risk of popping it from the top. Yeah, you might <laughs> might pop. You might send off an eruption. So I, I found that was interesting. That believe it or not, in 2017, NASA actually had a plan. So we're worried about global warming, and now we're going to release a whole bunch of steam <laughs> on top of that to add to the global warming to cool off the volcano? Yeah, that's about it. Hmm. They say Yellowstone currently leaks about 60 to 70% of the heat coming up from below into the atmosphere right now. So when via, that gets plugged, we're going to have a problem. Via water, which seeps into the magna chamber through cracks. The remainder builds up inside the magma, enabling it to dissolve more and more volatile gases and surrounding rocks. Once this heat reaches a certain threshold, an explosive eruption is inevitable. Inevitable, But if more of the heat could be extracted, then the supervolcano would never erupt. NASA estimates that if 35% increase in heat transfer could be achieved from its magma chamber, Yellowstone would no longer pose a threat. The only question is, is how would you do it? And this is where engineering would come in. Right. They said one possibility is to simply increase the amount of water in the supervolcano. But from a practical perspective, it would likely be impossible to convince politicians to sanction such an initiative simply because of the water situation in that region of the United States. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're already fighting over, over water in that area. Yeah, you'd have to pump it from the ocean. Right. Building a big aqueduct uphill into the mountainous region would both be costly and difficult. Um, it would be very controversial. I bet. <laughs> uh, instead, they conceive of a very different plan. They believe the most viable solution would be to drill up to 10 kilometers down into the supervolcano and pump down water at high pressure. The circulating water would return at a temperature of around 350 degrees Celsius or 662 degrees Fahrenheit, thus slowly, day by day, extracting heat from the volcano. And while such a project would come at an estimated cost of about $3.5 billion, it comes with an enticing catch which could convince politicians to make the investment. Yellowstone currently leaks about six gigawatts of heat. Cool. <laughs> Through drilling in this way, it could be used to create a giant geothermal plant, which would generate electric power and extremely competitive prices around ten cents a kilowatt. You would have to be you would you would have to give the geothermal companies incentives to drill somewhat deeper and then use hotter water than they usually would. But you would pay back your initial investment and get electricity, which which can then power the surrounding area for a period of potentially tens of thousands of years. Not a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, if you can do it, mm-hmm. you know, because then you now you've introduced a, I can deliver electricity to consumers at a at a mm-hmm. at a competitive rate. I mean, not. Not a bad idea. I mean, uh, if somehow and they there's could absolutely do it. no risk of messing that up and creating the super volcano taking off either. So, I mean, I don't know. As soon as you poke it, it's mm. going to get mad. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, they say here, you talk about poking the, the volcano. They said drilling into suit does not come without certain risk. Mm-hmm. If you drill into the top of the magma trainer and try to cool it from there, this would be very risky. That would make the cap over the magma chamber more brittle and prone to fracture, mm-hmm. which is what you don't want mm-hmm. to do. And you might trigger a release of harmful volatile gases in the magma at the top of the chamber, which would otherwise not be released. They said instead it's to drill from the supervolcano from the lower sides starting outside the boundaries of Yellowstone National Park and extracting heat from the underside of the magma chamber. This way you're preventing heat coming up from below from ever reaching the top of the chamber, which is where the real threat is. Mm. So, you know, believe it or not, that's what I'm saying, that NASA actually... Had an actual Mm -hmm. theoretical paper on this topic, so at least I mean they're they're working on it, right? You know, people a lot smarter than we are that are you're right, (laughs) you know. But yeah, what what could go wrong with the government getting involved in something? Well, yeah, they're here to help you. That's right. Well, you know, so but I mean, you know. It, it's something to think about because I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, all these kind of, you know, disaster scenarios, you know, you know, from hindsight, if you look at it, go, what it would be the cost if it explodes, right? What would be the cost a lot to the more country? Than a couple billion dollars. Not more than three point five billion dollars. Right. I can tell you, a it, lot it, more. I mean, we're we're talking about shutting down basically the United States economy mm-hmm. for months. Yeah. Food production gets hit. All the wheat fields in Kansas, mm-hmm. Nebraska, all that area, the breadbasket of the United States, that all gets affected. Mm. So, I don't know. I mean, but it's, it's interesting, but... They make it out to be there's a lot of lot of hoopla with this stuff mm-hmm. about this volcano, but it probably never will happen in our lifetime. No. It will happen eventually, right? right? At some point, just like eventually, at some point, uh, we'll probably get hit again by another asteroid or something. Yeah, um, the Great Filter. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's our great filter. Maybe we got to worry we get well, past some, that. Well, some people actually feel like super volcanoes are more of a a threat to global life than actual an asteroid impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I I just think the idea of a you know that sort of thing happening would be biblical. Oh in yeah. Its, you know, and it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, I really, I, I, you don't probably want to be on the planet if a, you know, seven mile, eight mile asteroid is traveling at 46,000 miles an hour or mm-hmm. whatever they, they mm-hmm. and, and, and punch a hole in the, in the atmosphere and, and hit because that would be a catastrophe. Yeah. Beyond, beyond telling. But, uh, um, yeah. So well, and that's what we whenever we talked about the whole the great filter. There's like there was there's many different uh, versions of it, uh, of of what could be a society's great filter, and one of them was you know, uh, um, trying to achieve more power, and of course somehow, you know, failing and doing that. So I mean, what if us trying to get this so many gigawatts of power out of the this caldera, you know, could be the thing that, you know, could be a filter that like if say hypothetically it doesn't go off, then it could be something we pass and it's no big deal. But if we don't and it pops and it's like, okay, then, you know, but could we survive through it and make it to the other end? Probably so, you know, yeah, would that, would that be like a humanity erasing explosion or would that, or, you know, that, or would it just set us back I, I, for a I long time? I, th- I know? think, I think we would, I, I don't think that this is a global killer. Right, right, right. I don't, I don't believe it's a global killer. Um, yeah. I, 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 you I think would, it's you a would, continental would, oh shit. Well, no, you're right. Oh yeah. You're from, right. from a continental United States. Yes. Yeah. You'd be in trouble. Um, mm-hmm. you know, because that you're going to have problems. Uh, I mean, all air travel sh- shut down. Oh, yeah. uh, Definitely. Your economy is ground to a halt. 
Yeah, you got long term issues with with weather and 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 ash and how do you deal with the health issues? We got to make people mm-hmm. go. In. Everybody's got to be wearing gas masks mm-hmm. everywhere they go when they go outside. So yeah, I mean we're we're talking about a uh, a massive uh, a massive endeavor. Yep. But it would be what is it an extinction level event? No, mm-hmm. I don't think so. No, no. It's not an right. Extinction. Yeah, it it's just not big enough in its effect um, to basically do that. Right. You know? So as far as a great filter is concerned, maybe not. Totally, no, but I, I don't think. And, that, and I think when we did that episode, mm-hmm. Super Volcanoes was one of the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to me, you would need like maybe several of them going off. Yeah. You know, something in the earth to... Um, I, 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 I think a... a Probably a more, um, you know, a more uh, likely event would be um, the 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 currents in the yeah. ocean yeah. stopping. Well, right. but you think about that—a volcano in that area going off. Would that be what we need to kind of just slide California off into the ocean? Could it just finally break that little well, that little California, earthquake? California would be would be buried pretty good. Yeah, I mean, can, so <laughs> can you imagine if all it the good broke wine it? making would all go away? Though. No, there's other good wine making. There's other good stuff. You but, know, but yeah, I mean, California, all that area. So I mean, they got thousand miles. They just mm-hmm. kind of draw a line from. So, I mean, anything going into probably Canada, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, all of like Montana, Wyoming, Nebraska, mm-hmm. um, Colorado. Maybe, maybe it would hit that fault line just right and California will just slide right off into the ocean. Well, I don't know. Maybe it will. It's kind of like that little uh, that little kid on the Internet who who, who asking his, his people, he said, if a vegan and a vegetarian fall out of a plane and die, who benefits? A vegan and a vegetarian? Yes. Society. <laughs> <laughs> so if California slides off into the ocean, who benefits? Society does. Well, there are a lot of good people in California. Ah, there are. There's like three. <laughs> Stony. <laughs> To all our listeners in California, we I'm love just you. Joking, uh, we love you. Uh, mm-hmm. You have a beautiful state. Uh, well, California just, is absolutely gorgeous. You know, I, I love to visit there. Matter of fact, I may be trying to run a race over there Uh-oh. soon. So, I'd love to go see Yosemite. So, uh, you do have a beautiful state. So, yes. all listeners in California, we like the kid. I'm, just I'm sure funny. you like y'all like to mm-hmm. kid about us oh, over yeah. here. So. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, I mean, this this super volcano, as I said, they got uh, Lake Toba and Krakatoa, probably one of the most famous mm-hmm. ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, 240 cubic miles of material is just mm-hmm. yeah, that's unbelievable. Hard to, hard to wrap my head around. Yeah, I mean, that that's that's getting blasted off. I mean, uh, you know, they, they do these things in movies about... Yeah, you know the explosion of Yellowstone. I think what was that movie? Twenty twelve. Oh yeah, yeah. That they show that black with Woody Harrelson is yeah. on the mountain. Blah blah blah. So, but in all seriousness, I, I think we should be okay. Can can it blow? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know they said it's a small percentage chance an eruption could happen, and there's no guarantee it's going to be a a level eight eruption. Right. It could, it might be, it might be a, a four. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it just kind of depends on that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's, I, I think we should be okay with, with the Yellowstone. I think it, what was that? What was that movie with Pierce Brosnan? Um, Dante's Peak or something? Yeah. That was a good movie, actually. Yeah. That was because it, it, it showed a lot of what could happen with a large volcano taken off like that. It wasn't a super volcano, but it was more impactful of an area. But it showed a lot of what could happen. I like that movie. That was a good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, it's uh, I don't uh, um, I'm all about if they to me, that's a win win. If somehow you can get an investor, that way they can drill oh, yeah. down and tap into that heat. Yeah, and 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 
a way of producing electricity clean, yeah, which I'm all for. I, I mean, I think that's a win-win. I, I kind of wish maybe some the government would maybe let investors possibly mm-hmm. build some some mega plants there to be able to tap into to that what nature already provides well, you. Think about you know the Mississippi River. Why don't we have the little paddle? Um, Think, generators on that. I think the problem with the Mississippi River when it comes to that is it's a working river. And I, I don't know if you got ships going up and down that. And, and I'm not saying they can't. They can do anything they want if there's a will and there's mm-hmm. a way. Uh, That's but what I'm you, saying. You have to convince people that it's a viable Right. You would you have know, to. Process. Yeah. I mean, I could easily see the river being used as mm-hmm. a, a, you know, to let the river's currents turn the turbines. Now, at times when the river's low, Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you, you know, the plant is not producing the electricity that it, but during the spring, oh yeah. Yeah. It's churning out pretty good because that river is moving. Mm-hmm. There's a guy on YouTube I've been watching recently who is like trying to, like him and a bunch of other people are trying to debunk the, like the stigma and the myths against uh, nuclear power about how there's a lot, you know, a lot of people, especially from, you know, older generations that, you know, are, are very against nuclear power. And he's like, but to be honest, it's like, and there's, he goes into a whole bunch of detail about how it's, you know, it's, it's so much easier and cleaner and safer than of course Mm -hmm. anything we're using currently. Well, we talked about that on an episode where we, you know, how much waste comes from a nuclear power plant. mm -hmm. If you take, if you take a football field, one football field, include the end zones, Mm-hmm. And you take all of the waste from every nuclear power plant that's ever been built, right. and you stack those rods straight up and down, the waste that comes from it. How many times would you fill up that football field? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't even make it to the 35-yard line. That's what I'm saying. I'm, mm-hmm. It's a very safe, it's a clean thing. Mm-hmm. You know, but there's just the, a lot of stigma against it. Again, a lot everyone of stigma. always everyone gets nervous about Chernobyl and stuff, which is again that is a possibility. But now it's but so, that was also a third world you're, country you're trying right. to run it. You're right with the Russians involved and, <laughs> yeah. and everything else involved. Yeah, to and, me, a modern built nuclear power plant would be very safe. It mm-hmm. is. And and, I've and, seen uh, videos of them, and they're uh, it's incredible. And, you know, clean, clean, yes. and I, I'm a firm believer. That's what I'm saying. I'm a firm believer in utilize everything that mm-hmm. you have to mm-hmm. produce energy. Not be over reliant on one. Of course, right? Spread it, spread it out, right. and that mm-hmm. way you, you have a backup one, to a backup. This can pick up if this falls short, mm-hmm. and you got this will pick up. Because look, I'm a believer in solar, mm-hmm. geothermal, mm-hmm. nuclear. You know, all well, of geothermal them. would be considered your volcano. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, right? that's what it's geothermal. That's yeah. it's geothermal energy. You you've got stuff there. You just have to have a will, and you gotta you have to make it where a, a, a company can can monetize it to be mm-hmm. able to deliver it. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the challenge. Well, and the big thing is like people that are you know people that have oil. And you know that have that are making money off of that. That's that's mm-hmm. another big deciding well, that, factor. That's where the you know. the stigma on nuclear energy of came course. from because you're going to be taking money out of the oil hands. Yep. All the oil barons yes. that have all the money in the world that are going to be. Well, I mean, so. they've been kind of running the show now you're since right. the industrial revolution. I mean, whenever they first delivered, mm-hmm. uh, discovered oil at uh, was a spindle <laughs> tap. I yeah. believe is the first mm-hmm. where oil was discovered. I may be wrong on that. Right. Um, But, you know, they've come out with hydrogen cars now, and they've come out, I saw something the other day, the first hydrogen outboard motor for a boat. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Well. And it runs on. Fusion powered. Oh, what what was that? Back to the future (laughs) when you put some banana peels and everything in your car. Uh, I'm thinking of my video game Fallout. Yeah, Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. There you go. Love that. (laughs) The plasma energy stuff, too. Yeah. Uh, I I just saw a video recently of a guy who made like a little bike, like a little motorcycle kind of thing, but he made it steam powered. And it was very interesting, but it it ran. He got it, he got it, uh, you know, heating up. He put a bunch of water in it, got it all heated up somehow through tubes and copper and things yeah. like that. And he had like a, like a little steam, uh, almost like a locomotive, like a, like a, a train engine thing that was like you know, yeah. chugging up. And he like, <laughs> it was interesting. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how effective that is or 
or not, and or how scary it may be having you know, a, a, you know, motorcycles already pretty hot. You know, having a, a, right. a boiler between your legs somehow and doesn't sound fun. But I was like, hey, that's cool. I guess he, yeah. he made it happen. So hmm. yeah, I mean, it's as I said, I, I think we always need to be. You need to explore all things. Yeah, not vilify one you just mm-hmm. you just simply open it up and try to have all your bases covered yeah and uh i've always i've always been in favor of of exploring all options yeah mm-hmm. uh, i think i think solar power is uh, i think will get better as time goes on as the mm-hmm. technology gets better with with solar batteries and 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 you right now you have a lot of waste mm-hmm. that you're a lot of energy you're losing um, with with the current solar tech, yeah. Um, but that will get better. Well, right? the panels aren't as efficient as they need to be yet, but they're coming out they're with coming new out. technology. They had an article in one of the publications a couple of weeks ago about some of the new solar panels that are coming out that are a lot more efficient. Right. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, we're, we're not we're, that far from it. No. So yeah. So. Uh, I think we're good on the on the super volcanoes. Yeah, uh, I, I think we should be fine. But you know, it's they're fun to talk about, and and you know, a lot of people probably not familiar with them and what they are. I mean, and how many there are actually right? Are. Uh, yeah. and there are a lot of volcanoes, but there was uh, there's only about twenty or so super volcanoes, and and you know, as I said, it's just when they happen, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, just like when Mount St. Helens blew. Yeah. I mean, I remember that when it blew. I mean, it's like that was an awesome sight to see pictures of the whole yes, mountain it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. just completely disintegrating. But I don't think that's a super volcano. That wasn't. That's not a super. No, volcano. it was impressive. It was impressive. That's what I'm least. saying. So when yeah. people look at look at Mount St. Helens mm-hmm. and think of a super volcano, would make that look like a a firecracker. Yeah, just again <laughs> as yeah. as awesome. And awe-inspiring as those pictures are, mm-hmm. what Yellowstone would be would be if it blew the way it blew six hundred forty thousand years ago or so, mm-hmm. would be for most people would consider that a biblical yeah. type of look. Mm-hmm. It would be that impressive because the it it would be oh it is biblical because there's a lot of people coming to Jesus that day yeah. It, it it would be a um, something that I don't know if we would be ready for because a lot oh, of yeah. people a lot of people would be killed. I mean, let's just be honest. I wonder if you could like if that's something that you could reasonably know when. Like like let's say you have like a heads up of a little bit where like you know there's like a like there's an evacuation period where like we, you could potentially save lives or is that just one of those, like you don't know when it's going to happen. It's just going to explode. They, they actually monitor Yellowstone quite extensively. Yeah. And they can pretty much give warnings of when one is coming. So with the amount of sensors Mm -hmm. and stuff they have in it now, from what I understand, it's, it's pretty. That's what I was saying. Even if they would, you would have, uh, you know, weeks or months. Of course, no, right. I don't think so because they didn't know shit about Mount St. Helens. Well, that was then. They've and, made some advances now right. since then, but that's just that's Yellowstone, right? Mm-hmm. Not every super volcano mm-hmm. is probably monitored that way because right. of just the locations You're right. of where they're at. I mean, some of these things are out in the middle of the ocean, of course, and of course, I and mean, we all saw on the news not long ago. The big giant underwater mm-hmm. eruption that occurred. Oh yeah, underwater. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know something happens there. I mean, you could say a super eruption happens in the in in the ocean. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's different. Then right that, you got a massive <laughs> tsunami you've just mm-hmm. generated because of the amount of force mm-hmm. that you've now pushed the ocean up. Yeah, and now you've created that bubble, and now you got waves going out. Well, and, one of the things that I did was the myths. Of Yellowstone and myth five is scientists can predict exactly when Yellowstone will erupt. And the fact predicting volcanic eruptions, especially at a complex system like Yellowstone, is challenging. 
While scientists may have made significant advances in monitoring volcanic activity, including seismic, ground deformation, gas emissions, these indicators can only provide warning signs of increased volcanic unrest, not precise predictions of when an eruption will incur. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, oh, everybody leave. No, it didn't happen. Oh, everybody leave. No, it didn't happen. So the third time, it's like a hurricane. Oh, yeah. How many people are actually going, you know, it's coming. How many people are going to leave? Not many. Right. Especially in Louisiana, we have a hurricane party. So, you know. Oh, I have a feeling like even if even if you're told, like, even if, you know, the the – even if Yellowstone is erupting around you, there's still going to be people that are going to sit there. That's just how it is. The mm -hmm. same thing with hurricanes around here. Like the, the hurricane can be coming and you will give people ample warning and they'll still just sit there in their homes and they wait for their house to crumble down around them. And they're like, oh my gosh, I, <laughs> it's it's insane. Um, and I know that happens around here is so what I'm saying all that, but I'm pretty sure it'd be the same way. Right. Actually falling down around someone's house and they'll be like, oh my gosh, th this is crazy. And it's like, we gave you a heads up <laughs> and you just decided to stay there. Uh, so. I think I saw here Yellowstone in 2018, as far as its threat assessment, was listed at number 18. Wow. <laughs> okay. Top 20. <laughs> Top, so it's 18. So okay. it's uh, um, it's there. What, it's 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 not. I think what freaks people it's a out. High, mostly, they call it a high threat. It mm -hmm. is a high. It is a high threat. But I think what freaks people out the most is you can actually see the ground. Oh yeah, it breathes. Mm -hmm. It breathes, breathes almost. And, and that's what freaks most people out. That's I think it's the, really the only super volcano that does that. And so that freaks people out the most about it is that you can actually watch it breathing up and down, and every time it goes up, is this the time? You know, oh mm -hmm. shit, you know. Well, they, they, I've been, I saw some videos of what an eruption would look like, and it's pretty impressive of how. Well, I think they have videos. You can watch Mount St. Helens on YouTube if you want. You can oh, yeah. look at it. It's, it's impressive. I wasn't around whenever that happened, so I didn't yep. actually know what. Um, it's, yeah. it's a, it was an impressive. And event. if I remember, temperatures got cold. Mm -hmm. that, really? That, for the next couple of years, winters were quite cold. In, in 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 Louisiana, and I, they blamed a lot of that because it pumped out a lot of a lot of ash, and it did drop temps a well, little it, bit. It blocked the sun for a while. It, it did. It did. I mm -hmm. remember that. So so yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else you want to hit on before we wrap this one up? Well, it. can we remind everybody to send your questions yeah. in for Ask the Mortician? Yep. Uh, that's an episode coming up. Uh, our website, our website, our email <laughs> is getoffendedtogether at gmail.com. Correct. And we actually do have a website. It's uh, www.retrospectpodcast.com if you want to check it out and offer any um, suggestions or anything. I just kind of goofed around with it. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's still yeah. under construction, but all of the tabs and buttons work. Mm-hmm. And uh, give it a check out and see if you like it. And, right. And please remember to, if you're listening to us, um, follow, subscribe, and give us five stars if you can. It, it helps. It helps us out. Helps helps spread the message and um, helps other people learn about us too. So. Yep. I agree with all that. That's all I was going to say. That's so, it. I'm yeah, sorry. that's it. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, well, and, you know, I say that because right. one one day I was at. Um, a bookstore, Barnes and Nobles, before the accident. And um, Miranda went to go find something. And I was talking to a couple, and they they saw me looking at the podcast mm -hmm. on my phone. And the young man said something about, well, that's funny, you're looking at that. He was in Japan. Mm -hmm. He was in one of the services, and he was in Japan, and he was looking up for a podcast. And retrospect popped up in his recommended list, and hey, I was like, "Wow, are you kidding me? We're worldwide, baby. Worldwide." <laughs> and so, you know, those things do help us out. If you if you give us five stars and 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 give us a review, it does help us out. It, right. it helps get us in that that little arena there where they start pushing us out, and You're we right. appreciate it. It really does help. Yeah, well, thank you, that, everyone. Because I was proud when he told me that I yeah. had a big old Miranda comes up. Why are you smiling so big? And please, you know, also please, if y'all have any suggestions on topics, mm -hmm. please, mm -hmm. please let us know because 
you know, it's hard coming up with something yeah, to discuss every week that, you know, sometimes somebody else would go, have y'all thought about this? And it's like, mm-hmm. wow, that'd be a great topic to talk about. We didn't right. even think about it. So well, they never tell you when you become an adult, the hardest decision you'll make every day is just what to eat. Oh, right. Like trying to figure out, you know, once a month, uh, once a week on a podcast topic exactly. is pretty tough mm-hmm. too. So, so yeah, I, please, please, there's anything out there that you feel like would be an interesting, please let us know. Right. And with all that being said, until next week, thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone. God bless. And thank you so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. You're the best. Peace. Peace.